Hey, Taco Tuesday fans, this is Christian Brindle. And I am Glenn Shelton. We came together and combined our forces to create something special for insurance agents called Taco Tuesday. Let's talk about insurance. My company, Christian Brindle Insurance Services, and my company, Lead Heroes, is here to bring you the latest and greatest news happening in the insurance industry today and eat some tacos while we do it. If you enjoy the content that we put out on this podcast, feel free to leave us a review or subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Without further ado, let's get into this episode of Taco Tuesday. Christian, Christian. Okay. There we go. Yo, welcome everybody to another episode of Taco Tuesday. I am here with Mr. Potato Head. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Would you like to buy some insurance over the phone? <laughs> <laughs> so there's the beauty of selling over the phone, my friends. You can wear whatever you want on your face. You don't have you can you don't have to wear pants. They can't see you over the phone. You can wear, um, you can wear skinny jeans. It just doesn't matter, guys. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of things. I've been thinking a lot about it since I knew we were going to be talking about it today. And there's a lot of different things with selling over the phone that I think a lot of people don't think about. Um, where do you want to start with? I mean, this is like a whale. Like, where do you, yeah. where do you start eating a whale? You know? this, this could this could end up being a three, four hour Taco Tuesday episode if we let it. So we have to pick our spots, I think. Um, I think my wife would probably cut my throat. <laughs> we get to, if we get to four hours and I'm alive, that would be incredible because yeah. I don't think she would allow that. Guys, if you don't stay on the live for the entire four hours, you're not a true Taco Tuesday believer. Hey, Kirk, dude, we've got someone local to me. I'm so sick of the Utah chat. Kirk's in Washington. Holler! I'm about an hour from you, brother. There you go, guys. There you go. Um, so if someone said skinny jeans. Is my camera on or something? <laughs> All right, guys. So before we start talking about telesales, I got some tacos to whip out for you guys. All right. So this is not a breakfast crunch wrap, but this is a, a crunch wrap supreme. Oh, okay. Crunch wrap supreme. Now, for the listeners at home, Christian. The Supreme at Taco Bell, if I'm not mistaken, that's sour cream and tomato. Mm -hmm. Is that, that's what you're getting for the Supreme? Mm -hmm. I go back and forth on whether I want it Supreme or not. Some days I don't want the Supreme. Right. You know? Same here. It comes and goes from time to time. But um, the crunch wraps just look so pretty you know they're folded so in in um so neatly and nicely i try to make a crunch wrap at home and it just it looks like a bunch of looks like a pile of shit you know <laughs> it wrapped in a taco <laughs> that sounds taco. very delicious i i'm looking forward to a homemade christian brindle crunch wrap supreme i wanted to go to taco bell today you guys but it's still relatively snowy here um, it's weird that here in Washington, I'm talking about snow the same time Texas is talking about snow. Clearly, the apocalypse is coming. Um, so today, you may have already seen it earlier. I had my tortilla mask. This is just a plain, I guess you could call it an empty taco. Because there's an empty taco. <laughs> it's, it's a taco, you guys. Just because there's nothing in it. <laughs> it's a soft taco. It's a soft, empty taco. I'm on a diet. So, so what is the, I mean, that, that, that brings the question. What is, I mean, people think, what is the criteria for a taco? Does it have to have anything in it, guys? I mean, we should put up a poll about this. Um. <laughs> this counts. <laughs> this counts as a taco. 
Tony, I'm assuming you're on like a bicycle pedaling your phone to power, right? <laughs> if you're watching, Tony, I'm assuming since you're in Texas, you're just on like a, maybe it's an elliptical and you're just powering your phone with an elliptical machine. You're just like. Did you see, did you see Tony cooking his dinner over the fireplace? Spaghetti. Yeah. Spaghetti Dude. over a fire. I mean, all these people in Texas, like the world is ending, like National General today. I couldn't get into their portal. I couldn't get into the quota is what it was. And um, I call them and they're like, yeah, the entire um, site is down because of the snowstorm in Texas. I'm like, you got to be shitting me. I'm like, the entire site is down. I can't get in. I can't. I I had to write a policy today and I had to tell the person, hey, we have to wait till tomorrow. Because the site is down because of the snowstorm. So guys, don't work with National General. You're hearing prayers <laughs> from Christian yeah. Brindle. Do not work with National General. I was, I was pissed. And then my my FMO in West Virginia, they had an ice storm and they all got ice stormed into their house. It sounds like excuses. Maybe so. Rebecca. Maybe. Hey, Rebecca. She's watching with us. Hey, um, Rebecca. Also in Texas. You know, and this is actually a great transition. I think this is a great segue point for what we promised to be talking about today is telesales, selling insurance over the phone. You know, we're talking about Texas. Texas is essentially um, on fire, but with ice, I guess is what I was going to say. It's, I don't know, like the memes have been killing me too, because again, that's a whole story for another day. But, you know, if you have bad weather, right, which happens everywhere at some point, you know, there's going to be bad weather. It could be extreme heat. I'm from Phoenix. There are days where literally you don't even want to get in your car. You know, it can be winter. It could be whatever. There it is. Taco Tuesday. I have another Taco Tuesday shirt coming, by the way. Now that I realize Christian has several, I'm trying to expand my wardrobe. Uh, but again, if there's bad weather and you're selling insurance over the phone, that's something that you can talk about with your prospect that nine out of 10 times doesn't affect you. But if you're driving and the weather is really bad, it might keep you from getting to your next appointment. So that is literally just one of so many reasons that selling insurance over the phone can be massively beneficial to you as an agent compared to trying to sell face to face. So that being said, Christian, what do you think the first thing we should discuss with selling senior insurance over the phone? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, the, the, the question that I get asked the most by agents that want to talk about selling over the phone is like, if they're selling Medicare Advantage, like, is it possible? And if it is possible, what's the best way to go about it? Because Medicare Advantage, of course, is much more challenging to sell over the phone, right? Opposed to maybe a, med a Medicare supplement or something else. Um, and so like, people want to know, like, you know, how do you go about the scope issue? You know what I mean? Like, what do you do about the scope and, right. um, what do you, and, and how do you deal with the plans being different in every market? I mean, there, there's really nothing I can tell you about that. My friends, you know, like if you don't know the plans, you don't know the plans. And, um, what do you do at that point? You like, right. I mean, you can pull up, uh, an e-health quoter. Or something like that, right? Like I, I use the e-health quoter for situations like that. Um, you just punch in a zip code and you can see every Medicare Advantage plan in the market. And you can instantly have at your fingertips summary of benefit PDFs, evidence of coverages, star note, star ratings, and things like that. But what that doesn't necessarily tell you is who's got the strongest network and things like that. So I think the Medicare Advantage conversation is probably a good place to start. Now, this recently changed specifically because of COVID, right? Where an agent from home is now eligible to sell Medicare Advantage over the phone. Whereas before you had, if you were doing a full-time telesales, you really had to be in a call center environment to do it, right? The rules were kind of all over the place um, because we were doing it for a long time before that but we were doing it compliantly. Like we were doing it in situations where like people were contacting us, referred to us kind of thing, but we weren't like marketing um, or anything like that. I mean, they had things put into place that made it okay, but, but, but there was such a fine line there, right? Because there was a lot of regulations to where, you know, like call center people, people that worked in call centers essentially had a much longer leash 
than an independent agent would have. Um, I think they just kind of tighten, loosen the screws a little bit, but it wasn't just straight up forbidden either, but there was a lot of gray area there before that. Yeah. So essentially, you know, I guess the floodgates metaphorically were on leash where it was, it went from the gray certain instances where you could, couldn't do it to, okay, now go ahead. You're at home. You can sell their phone. Um, and yeah, I think it really, the thing that I typically, when I'm talking to agents, especially with the Medicare Advantage conversation, I think getting that scope of appointment is, is number one, you know, especially from compliance. So, you know, if Medicare Advantage comes up, if you're having that conversation, if you are going to sell that telephonically, there's many ways of doing that. Um, you know, you can do a text scope, you can do an email scope. Is there a voice scope? Is that possible? With some carriers, there is a, a voice scope to where you can essentially call a number and do a kind of like a recorded voice scope over the phone. So that that's becoming more and more mainstream. So a lot of options, a lot of yeah. options. Text message scopes. I don't know if you mentioned that one. Um, yeah, I did. Have you ever done yeah. a text message scope? I've tried with Medicare Center. It doesn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean it's it's not probably what it's it seems to be cracked up to be like it takes forever for them to get it and stuff like that like it just hasn't worked that well when i've tried to do it um so i just kind of do i i, I kind of lean on the email more than anything it just seems to be the easiest and then i think that's and it's an easy way to set up how you're going to sign the application too because again if you are selling insurance over the phone and you can't get a wet ink signature, you know, how do you, how do you sign the application? And then again, depending on the carrier, it could be a voice application signature. It could be a email signature. Um, it really just depends. I've seen some carriers where they essentially have like a licensed version of DocuSign that they're using. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing uh, I guess that's worth mentioning here too is you can't just go rogue and create your own uh, your own e-application as well. So I've seen some agents do this where they think they can literally just get an e-signature software, upload a paper app, email it, get it signed, send it in, and they think that's legitimate. But you can't do that either. You have to you have to adhere to what the carrier is telling you to do and what they're offering. Real, real quickly, guys, I just wanted to give a shout out to, to, to Frederick Roth. Um, somebody that, I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like we, we, at some point we have to have him on if he's, if he's, if he wants I'd to come love on. To have him on. Um, I know Fred works with Aetna. And that's I mean, he, he helped me out with an issue earlier today, right? Like, um, and it seems like anytime I have an issue to where like, I just can't seem to get anywhere, anywhere the direction I just, you know. I mean, I, we have, we, I, I shoot him a message. We have a quick conversation and he's like, yeah, this is where it's at. This is what's going on. It's done. Or it's about to be done. Or like, give it, give it a day or two. Like, it's just like so easy for him to kind of go in and resolve something that seems like a big deal to us mere mortals. And um, so I, I just got a lot of love for him yeah. and um, love. We should have him on sometime uh, if he wants to. Fred, I think that's, it's huge. And, and Aetna, again, speaking of telesales carriers, Aetna is a, a terrific carrier to work with if you are trying to sell over the phone. I know some yes. who almost exclusively rep Aetna just because they're so easy to work with. They have huge name brand recognition. Um, and they're a lot of times priced very competitively depending on the area. So um Let's, I guess, like to really start a clean slate, if you're brand new to selling over the phone, whether you're, maybe you're a new agent, maybe you've been an agent for a while, but if you were brand new to selling over the phone, what do you think would be one of the first things you should do to get set up to start selling over the phone? Um, there's so many things that come to mind, um, but if, if there was... The, I think the first thing you have to have is I think you have to have some systems implant implemented because if you're selling over the phone, you know this as well as I do, you have to be very quick on your feet um, and you have to be able to pull up information very quickly because other than if you don't, then there's a lot of dead you know time on that phone call and it kind of just makes it a little awkward and uncomfortable for the prospect. Um, 
So I think you have to be prepared in terms of having everything organized with your systems. Like if you use a Sunfire or a Connecture or a, Met- or a Medicare center, which is a combination of the two, um, that has to be, you have to be familiar with it. You have to be up to speed on it. You have to know how it works. Um, I, I personally use a combination of, I use Medicare center for certain things. I use the e-health quota for other things. Um, I'm have CSG on hand at all times. If I need to jump into CSG, I, I have everything bookmarked and organized and labeled to where I can just give me like 30 seconds and I'm in where I need to go. And I'm like, Oh, well, Mrs. Jones, um, I had someone call me today from North Carolina. Um, someone that heard the podcast, a husband, and wife, and, um, they're turning 65 in September and they're trying to get a, a jump on things. I don't know Jack about North Carolina med subs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but within, but it didn't take me long to pull it up and kind of see what things look like. Now meds up obviously is easier than Medicare advantage. Right. Right. Um, but having the, I think having your systems in place and organized, I, I think is probably your first step because you have to be able to pull up the information fast for your prospects and your clients. Um, because it's not the same as if you're sitting in the kitchen table to where, you know, like you're just having small talk or something like that. And, you know, you're digging through your bag or whatever it is you bring into the house or whatever like that, or like you're trying to connect to their internet, you know what I mean? And their dog is like (laughs) jumping on you and trying to lick your face and bite you and all this stuff. Like none of that's going on. I have PTSD flashbacks just from you saying all that, right? My shuffling in your bag for so, papers. So, so real, qu- real quickly, um, my wife was training to be an insurance agent about five years ago. She thought she wanted to be an insurance agent. She got licensed. We went on some house appointments together. This little bastard dog comes up. We're walking up to the door. And this wasn't an appointment, though. We were door knocking direct mail leads. Oh. <laughs> for MedSup. For MedSup. For MedSup. For, for PDP. For PDP. Calm down, Calm down everybody. <laughs> um, and this little tiny dog comes up and takes a like a big bite out of her. And she goes, like, without thinking, she goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> and, the, and we didn't get into the door. I told oh, her, I'm like, her. I'm like, don't do that shock again. I don't care how much it hurts. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, again, telesales, you guys. You can avoid the dogs, right? So that's another benefit. Um, to build off what you're saying with systems, though. So, like, the very first thing, obviously, like, Quoting software is huge. There's a, several, di- you mentioned several different quoting software, right? You talked about eHealth, CSG. Um, does Medicare Center have their own quoter built into it as well? So Medicare Center essentially gives you the access to use either Connecture or Sunfire. You can pick, like they're both in there. Gotcha. So you can use both of those to run quotes and do enrollments. Like you can do both. Um inside of there. And then Medicare center also has CSG built in. So it's like a super quoter. It's like everything. Yeah. So you have to know how to quote. So like if you're brand new to telesales or you're just brand new to insurance, I think running a bunch of fake quotes to make sure and, and talking to another agent and just saying, Hey, you know, I'm, I, here's kind of a couple of scenarios. I ran some quotes and maybe checking with someone and just making sure that your quotes are accurate. Um, I think that's huge because once, you know, once you get someone on the phone, a prospect, a lead, someone that's interested, getting to that quote and explaining what their cost is going to be, which most of the time, right, it's centered around saving money. So getting to that quote is really one of the first steps in that conversation, you know, after you kind of build a little rapport. Now you're trying to figure out, you know, what what it's going to cost this, this senior. So, um doesn't, I don't think it really matters what software you're using. Just get comfortable with it and figure it out. Um, and then the next step would really probably be the e-application, right? So assume you quote them. They're happy with it. They, they want to move forward. They want to save money. You know, again, whatever it is that you're, you're selling them. Um, so again, being comfortable with that e-app, how they're going to sign it, making sure you're filling it out, Um Typically with the e-application, are you doing that through one of these software providers or are you going direct through the carrier's website when you're doing an e-app like for Aetna or for Mutual Omaha or someone like that, one of the bigger carriers? So it, it, it depends on the carrier because there are some carriers that I like their e-app so much that I would rather do it with them than do it on a third party. Um, like United is that way. 
Like I really love Jarvis and I love um, the whole portal and I love lean, you know, lean is their e-application tool. Um, I think it's very easy to use. And so, and I think it's just very easy. Like with United, what I love about it that's so cool is like, let's say you're working with someone that's previously been a United customer. And sometimes that will come up, right? Like if they've been on a, maybe a United advantage plan in the past, if you're doing another advantage plan for them, if you put in their Medicare number, their name, a couple other pieces of information, it will populate everything, their address, their primary care physician, like everything. It just saves you so much time. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's huge. And so I love that one. You mentioned Aetna Senior. Um, I love theirs because if you're bundling, right, which guys, no love for the cross-selling topic, yeah. right? I, yeah. I, what, what is up? Come on, Glenn, guys. Glenn mentioned that we should talk about that and, and, and he's right, Dang. but like no love there. But, um, but if you are cross-selling, their portal and their e-application tool is absolutely ridiculous because it's almost like you're shopping on Amazon and you're adding to cart. You know what I mean? Like you're doing wow. med sup, you add the med sup to cart. All right, now let's look at the dental vision hearing plan, add it to cart. Cancer plan too, add it to cart. Like it's just, it makes it so simple to sell all these products at the exact same time. Um, theirs is next level in my opinion. Um, and also with their automated underwriting too. Like a lot of times you can have an underwriting decision on a med sup with them within like a matter of a minute or two. Um so there's some portals that their their e-app is so good that I'll just go directly to the carrier. But if it's someone that I believe is a nightmare, like a well care or a, a silver or a silver script Uh-oh. or something like that, yeah. I will just do I'll do it on Medicare Center. I won't even try on their on their on their site. So it just depends on who I, what I'm actually. I noticed saying. I noticed CSG is also kind of starting to to try to grab. It seems like some of those applications. So that way you can essentially quote and then go directly into the app. Have you tried doing any e-applications through CSG? I have. Um, from, from what I've seen in Medicare Center, because Medicare Center has the CSG um, portion of what it is, it, it, and it could be different if someone has CSG through a different method. So don't crucify me if I'm wrong here. It seems like, um, it seems like it's, it's one of those things that, there's certain carriers you can do it on, but not every carrier. You know what I mean? Like it's just certain carriers. Um, and so yeah, I because, that. because of that, I haven't done a huge amount on there, but I, I've tried once or twice on there. It seems like if someone could get to the point where the e-application can be completely integrated, especially with all these different carriers with the quoting software, it seems like that would be the home run. I, I don't think anyone has that yet. Um, not all inclusive. And like you said, last time I looked at CSG, which I want to say was like sometime last year, I was just playing around with some quotes, um, talking with an agency. And, and essentially what I was seeing in there is, you know, there were a couple of carriers or two or three carriers where the e-app was able to populate right there in the software, but it definitely wasn't everybody, which kind of sucks. Cause then if you are doing it that way, you're kind of having to bounce around depending on what carrier you're working with. Um, but yeah, I, so I had a question for you. Yeah. Um, cause you, you obviously work with more people that sell over the phone at a huge level than probably there's very few people I can think of that would even come close to the amount of people that you, in, you, you work with on a day-to-day basis. And, um, and it's, and you need to get a tattoo of a taco <laughs> right there on the bicep. <laughs> Um, no, but my, my, I guess my question is, do you think agents are better off just trying to make a sale just by talking on the phone, like phone to phone, or do you think they're better off trying to do like a screen share technology or a zoom yeah. call with a screen share? Like, like, cause, cause I, I end up doing both, right? Like I end up seeing myself do a mixture of the two. And I kind of just, I, I throw a couple options out there to see what the client's most comfortable with. And sometimes the screen share is very helpful because you can run through documents and stuff like that. And um, so I wanted to get your opinion on that. Absolutely. And Michael actually asked this exact question kind of at the start of our conversation. He oh, said, Do older it. seniors prefer to talk over the phone instead of Zoom meetings. So, um, you know, there's obviously doing screen shares, um, doing video chats. This is kind of older technology at this point. Right. People have been able to do this for almost a decade. 
So um, I think what's going to happen is it's going to become probably more and more mainstream, more and more common. The pandemic, if anything, has accelerated it. However, the vast majority of call centers and independent agents that I work with, that I speak with, when we get into how they're selling insurance, specifically telesales, I would still say the vast majority is doing this exclusively by voice over a phone. So using a phone or only, you know, again, whatever, maybe you have a dialer system, but it's, you're, you're just using voice. You're not doing a screen share. You're not doing a video chat. I think that's more niche. I really do. I think, I think it does make sense for some seniors, um, maybe even the T65 crowd. It makes a little more sense because it is kind of a younger demographic in the senior market. Yeah. But, you know, as far as like call centers that are that have like their entire agency doing Zooms or doing screen shares, I'm not aware of, of any major call center that's structured that way. Again, maybe it's something that's on the horizon. Uh, but as of right now, I think a lot of seniors, when you say, hey, can you go jump on your computer? I think there's a lot of seniors that are like, nope, I don't want to jump on my computer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, you can talk to me on the phone right now. Um, and then this also like a big part of this too comes back to the demographic or the area that you're targeting, right? So if you're targeting someone who lives in an extremely rural area, they are going to be even less likely to be um, technology savvy versus targeting someone who's in a major metro area. Um, it, it's just kind of part of that demographic. So you know, if I'm working with someone and we're targeting SUPs and we're targeting rural areas because they want to try to attract more SUP clients, you know, that's an even more likely situation where you're going to just be talking on the phone and, and the idea of trying to do something like a screen share is even more irrelevant. So kind of a long answer, but I hope that kind of explains what I'm seeing anyways yeah. from my end. And I agree. I agree. Um, I see, it seems like to me, the, the groups that I end up um, bumping into or encountering or anything like that, or maybe even just people that I'll talk to. Um, like I said, I talk to a lot less of them than you do, but it, I, I kind of get gotten the same message as well, that it's just, you know, that's not, it's not much of a focus. Um, there are situations like, like, like usually if I'm getting, let's say like an incredibly warm lead, I might switch it to a screen share or something like that because I, I feel like I have a lot of leverage there, you know? Right. Um, like if I get like a referral from a one of my best clients, like sister-in-laws or something like that, you know, like it's, I'm, I'm, unless, unless I do something crazy, I'm going to get the sale, you know, like, unless I get on and I like make some comment, like you have a huge behind or something like rude or something like I'm going to get the sale. And so sometimes I'll end up like, I guess, more leaning on the screen share stuff a little bit as like a crutch. Um, and I feel like there are certain situations that it does help because you can go through documents. It's like they're seeing the stuff instead of just hearing it. But um, I'd say, you know, if I was just working leads, like, you know, this past AEP, there was very little of that going on. And there was a lot more just phone to phone. So Michael asked another question. And I think this kind of where you were going. And this is really, in my opinion, the single biggest differentiator or the, or the, the single f most important factor that's going to separate face-to-face -face sales from telesales. So um, again, somebody who's really good at phone sales might not be great. <laughs> you have a big behind. I don't know. <laughs> what <is that> <laughs> Thank you, Monica. I don't know if that's <laughs> me or Christian that that's directed at. I'm assuming it's me. Um, I, I made I made I made that little comment about like, you know, as long as you're not insulting and you say you like oh. some mean comment, like you have a big behind or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, but building rapport, building trust, right? So when you're face to face yeah. and you're selling insurance, it's significantly easier to sit down and build trust without having to do a whole lot because you're physically there. You're sitting there with someone, you're telling them, Hey, I'm an insurance agent. There's a certain level of credibility that comes with literally just showing up and sitting down and you lose all of that when you're just making a simple phone call, especially when someone can literally just hang up on you. 
So right. that, that that's really kind of the key thing. And, and again, I've sat in an agency where this was someone who was in like the top five leaderboard for major carriers like Aetna. And I got to sit there all day and listen to him present over the phone. And it was very, very interesting as someone who, again, majority of my experience as an agent is selling face to face in the house, just like you talked about earlier. Um, it was very interesting to be able to get that other perspective of, you know, what does a top telesales rep say and what are they doing and why are they so successful selling insurance this way versus someone who sells face to face? So before I get more into that, what is your best method of building rapport or building trust when you feel like you have someone on the phone? And, and again, this isn't necessarily a warm referral this could be someone, it's just a lead, right? Someone that yeah. you're talking to for the first time. You can tell maybe they're, they're hesitant. They don't really necessarily trust you. What are you doing to build trust? Yeah. Um, and to expand maybe a little bit on what you were just saying too, like the difference is um, quite a bit actually in terms of the, the rapport building in person opposed to over the phone. Because in person, I mean, a huge portion of our communication face to face is not done by speaking. You know, it's seeing your smile, you know, like seeing your big smile on your face, your enthusiasm. Um, it's, it's being able to see your body language, you know, and your, the energy that you're presenting there, your, your, your hand motions, your awesome hand motions while you're talking, you know, like there, <laughs> there's so much of it that has, that has nothing to do with what you're saying. So a lot of it, in my opinion, um, comes completely down to your tones and nailing your tonalities and nailing how you're, you're saying things, how you're pronouncing things, what, what emphasis you put on which word and what word, because that stuff comes through 99% more when they can't see you because they're not thinking about what you look like as much. You know, they're not taking in as many different factors. They're only taking in your voice and your voice has to be perfect. Um, in terms of, just nailing those tones, right? So like putting emphasis on the correct words, you know, like um, presenting yourself in such a, tr in, in, in a trustworthy manner, you know, like I, I think what really helped me a lot with this when I was, you know, starting to sell over the phone, cause, cause I, I'm not shy about this. I did face-to-face -face exclusively for a long time and I did not start doing any over the phone sales till probably about three years ago. And um, it was a very difficult transition for me at first, but what helped me out a ton was I started, you know, doing some Jordan Belfort um, straight line training. Like it was very helpful. Like it helped me understand those tones and those tonalities. And um, what's the, what's the straight, I'm not familiar with the straight line training. What is the straight line training? So the, the straight line selling system is, is Jordan Belfort's like, I guess, philosophy of making a sale. Like it's, it's moving. It, they, essentially they describe it like you have a line, right? And the line is from here to here and you have to keep it going down the line and not get off track. Cause if getting off track is like talking about their mother or their father, or, you know, this traumatic incident that happened when they were five years old or something like that. Like it's keeping it down the line and you're getting from point A to point B to point C of the sale. And, and, and the final end of the straight line is actually um, making the sale, and he emphasizes so heavily using your using your voice and using your tones in such a way. You know, like if you're gonna like like some sometimes you might need to put a lot of emphasis in something that you're saying, and sometimes you might need to slow it down and lower your tone a little bit. You know, and th those kind of things helped me out dramatically when it comes to selling over the phone. And I still use a lot of it today. So that that's the biggest thing for me in terms of building rapport is it's just nailing those tones because you're, you're at a disadvantage because they can't see you. They can't see your smiling face. They can't, you, they can't, you, you don't have the benefit of the other terms of communication. So when I was doing door to door sales many, many, many years ago, when I first got into my, my sales career, um, the thing that was taught to me that I really focused on was emotional transference, right? The idea that if I'm excited, you're going to get excited about this. And, um, you know, and then when I think back to some of the insurance sales training I got from the agency I was with, you know, the manager that kind of helped train me, he was, he was all about mirroring whatever the prospect's energy or, or really tone was. 
So like if someone was just kind of angry and, and, um, you know, kind of, um, disinterested. Yeah. Just not really like, you know, they, they, they're focused on other stuff. Like he kind of mirrors that he'll talk about, you know, what he's talking about. He'll share, you know, some, some sort of empathy, you know, again, trying to connect emotionally, right. Um, in order to, to move them forward and, and get where they're going. And so I feel like there is a lot of uh, emotional transference is definitely a real thing. I totally believe in that. I think that you can absolutely come into a conversation, whether it's over the phone or face to face, and you can get someone to essentially absorb what emotion you're wanting to, or you can kind of mirror their emotion to get that connection going. So yeah. I, I think tonality kind of plays into the same thing is, you know, if someone's, if they sound low, if they have a low voice, you know, if they don't sound excited, whatever it is, I think having, I think kind of matching that is, is a way of building that rapport and, and hopefully moving the conversation forward. Do you have a tone, a general tone that you try to hit? Like, would you say you generally try to go with like a lower, my opinion is a lower voice builds confidence in what you're saying so i think i think if you have almost kind of a, a batman you know like just kind of a lower to like a lower octave i think you sound you sound like a more confident person i would say when you're on the phone yeah like like one i agree with that i think that like and it also gets people to be like maybe want to hear what you have to say a little bit more it makes them like kind of tune in a little bit be like oh what, what maybe maybe there's something good happening here you know or i'm going to miss out some on some good information if i don't pay attention like one thing that jordan does in in his trainings is he's real big on you, you know going from one tone to another where it fits and so like when you first get on the phone like this is something that's pretty like you know I, I, I think it's taught by probably anyone that teaches telesales is, you know, that I've seen, it's just like, when you first get on the phone, you want to be excited. Like you said, you know, like you're excited, you're enthusiastic to talk to them. So that might be a little bit of a higher tone right off the bat. But so like you, you start off a call, maybe along the lines of, you know, uh, let's say you're calling, you know, Mrs. Jones, you know, it, it would start off the call somewhere in the long, along the lines being like a, hi, uh, is this Mrs. Jones? you know, just a little bit of an excitement, enthusiasm there. And then she'd be like, yes. I'd be like, oh, great. Mrs. Jones, my name is Christian. And then I'd lower the tone. Like the reason for the call today, Mrs. Jones, um, and something along those lines. And I use, that's a script that I heavily use when I'm selling. Um, and my sales got so much better when I started to in, implement that into my, my, um, my process but yeah, I agree. I think like when it's the most important time for you to get something across, I think it helps to lower that tone. And, and, and what you did there too, and you probably didn't even think about it, but getting a little quieter as well and kind yeah. of making them have to like, they have to kind of listen a little more. Um, one of the things that was toughest for me, and again, I own a call center. We're talking to seniors all the time and I have to go over this with my team is um speed so i think there's there's also a cadence that you kind of want with seniors a lot of times if you're talking too fast it's just going to go right over their head they won't totally, really yeah. grasp any of it so there's kind of a, a cadence i think some of our best callers on our team at lead heroes they're typically better at kind of slowing it down there's kind of a cadence to to the words you're saying to the rhythm of the conversation where they can understand, but you're also not going too slow. You're, you're still kind of pushing them in that direction. You're having that conversation that you want to have. Um, and so it's kind of, and a lot of this stuff too, you guys, you have to figure out like how it works for you. Like when we're talking about, you know, where at in the call that you're going to have, you know, certain tonalities or what your speed sounds like, like it has to be comfortable from, from you and, and it has to sound comfortable. Like you can tell if someone's really being fake on the phone. So it has to totally. be authentic. So, you know, you have to kind of play with, you're going it, to, it's very similar to the scripting thing. Like everyone wants the script. What's the script? What do I say? Give me the script. When I love the leads. Give me the script. We're, we're going for this. And it's like, 
listen, I can kind of give you some basic scripting. Like I have a ton of different scripts that other agents have even given us. I could give you a million scripts, but at the end of the day, like it has to, it has to sound like it's coming out of your mouth. It has to be organic. And so, you know, scripting can be great to set a baseline for what you're going to say, but you really have to kind of mold it to you. So I, I want to stress that too, for anybody listening or watching this, there's not a magic script. There's not a magic set of tonalities. Yeah. Um, it, there's just tools essentially that you can use to build or to fix what you're already doing. At, at the end of the day, you know, a script is just a bunch of words and you can, you can give the same script to two different agents and one could do incredibly well with it. And one could get slaughtered with it. Cause it, it's just a bunch of words. It's up to you, depending on how you say them and it matches you. And so I, I think that's very true. Um, like when, when I was, when I was first starting to learn how to cold call, cause that, cause we were doing face-to-face -face appointments, but we were booking them over the phone um, exclusively and really just calling people out of the blue for Medicare supplements, not for Medicare Advantage plans. Um, for all of you that are going to jump on me every time I say the word cold honey, call. Honey, get me the CMS number. We just got Christian Brindle. We got him. We got him. We got him. We got him. Hello, CMS. <laughs> but, but like, you know, when I was, when I was starting, I was 20 years old and um, I'd get on the phone with people and my dad taught me at first to be excited on the phone, like to act excited. So I would probably be too excited. And right. I would show up for appointments and I, my tone would be so high. The script was perfect. Like the script was fine. But the way yeah. I was saying it, I would show up and people were expecting a girl on the doorstep. <laughs> and they're like, where's the girl? I'm Wait like, a second. What girl? <laughs> and they're like, we talked to, talk to a girl on the phone. I'm like, no, you just talked to me. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I probably had a couple of those too. But that, yeah, again, it's, it's almost like cooking. Like you have to, you have to get the ratio of these different ingredients, right? Because like you just said there, I mean, you can have the perfect scripting for somebody, but if your tone doesn't match or your pitch of your voice just doesn't match it, then it's going to just fall on deaf ears. They won't, they won't grab what you're trying to say. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention too. So when I mentioned this agent who is you know, extremely impressive. One of the best Medicare supplement telesales agents I have ever communicated with. Um, he, I watched him take someone, it was, a, it was a lead that we gave him and the lead was very much like, I, I was hearing the whole conversation and, and my guess at the start of it was that she was just gonna hang up the phone. Like she was, she was very skeptical She's like, what is this about? Why are you talking to me about Medicare? I already have a Medicare plan. Like, you know, just all of the sort of defensiveness that you think you could possibly get from a lead. And aggression. Yeah, just a ton of aggression, assuming that, you know, he was doing something illegal or, you know, that it's a scam. You're just trying to get my information. I mean, you name it. It's, it's all, of, all of the things that you guys hear on a daily basis. And he was able to massage this lady from that position to a, an application to a referral of a family. Man. So like literally taking someone like that. And, and this is what, in my opinion, why this agent was one of the best. It's not because he's like this ultimate closer, but that he can take a lead that's basically leaning, on, not even on like the fence. Dead. I would say, uh, yeah, leaning off the fence to like, I'm not doing this today <clears throat> all the way to the other direction where not only is it a deal, but he's getting referrals of family members of friends from that person. It was, it was mind blowing to watch that. That's just spectrum. The, the pendulum just swing from, you know, this side all the way to the other side. It, it was insane. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, how some people can take, like, it's, it's one of those things too, like where you, you, some people, so many people talk about, oh, the leads are no good. And then you give them, and then they're, they're handed off to another person and that other person kills it with them. Um, Cause it's not the lead, the lead. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'd be interested to hear your opinion about what I'm about to say, but I think the lead has very little to do with it. I think it has everything to do with the person working the lead. It, it totally goes back to the cliche that a lead is a lead is a lead. Because whether you're calling, you know, 
cold data, you're calling a referral, you're calling, you know, an internet lead, a telemarketing lead, like a lead is a lead is a lead. And I think and, and the agent behind the lead is, is 10 times more important than the lead itself, for sure. Um, one thing that this agent did, I wanted to mention too, is, you know, this lady was extremely skeptical. He's giving his insurance license number over the phone. He's telling her, hey, you can look me up on the State Department of Insurance. If you're not, if that's not enough, I will three-way call the State Department of Insurance right now. And I will give them my license number over the phone and they will validate I am who I say I am. Um, so that way, you know, and that you are comfortable. So like, that was the first thing that really hammered home to this lady. And I felt like that was kind of the thing that brought the wall down. And, and that's similar to face to face, you guys, I used to carry around my license. So I could show people because that still would happen that same sort of skepticism would happen face to face. So I think you have to you have to be able to punch, you got to break down these people's walls you know, because they will all have their own walls, whatever it is, you know, it's kind of objection handling. Another thing that um, I think kind of goes hand in hand with uh, breaking down these objections a little bit too, and kind of massaging people, like you mentioned with this guy. Um, One thing that I have learned over the years is I think it, I think you're always in um, a good place if you can kind of mirror their energy, you know, because it, it kind of goes into the line of staying in agreement, right? Like you never want to disagree with the prospect kind of thing, which not isn't, isn't necessarily written in stone. I've disagreed with plenty <laughs> of people I've sold, you know, openly because <laughs> sometimes they'll say something that's completely not true and I have to call them on it. Otherwise I'm not explaining the product properly and I'm right. not being compliant, but, um, but there, but there's been plenty of situations where like, you know, if you're dealing with maybe a difficult prospect like that, Sometimes it helps to mirror their energy. You know, like if they're complaining about insurance agents, for example, they're like, oh, insurance agents suck and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I completely understand where you're coming from, miss. You would not believe this person that I ran into a couple of years. And you just, you just go with them on this yep. journey sometimes. Yep. And sometimes that helps them build a little bit of familiarity with you. You know, like people love to hear you're right. You know, people love to be told they're right, even if, they're probably not. Um, and so sometimes mirroring that energy with people, like if they're pissed off, not to say that you should be pissed off, that's not what I'm saying, but like, you know, you basically just massage them that they're right about something, or, you know, you just kind of mirror their energy and it builds familiarity with them and it helps build trust ultimately. So that's another, another thing that has, has been a big lesson for me to learn over the years. That's helped me make a lot of sales. I think another big thing that that separates face-to-face agents and telesales, I think telesales agents, the really good ones, they are masters of not necessarily getting all of it in one go. You know, you build rapport on the first phone call and maybe you get to the quote. And then the second phone call, you're essentially hammering that quote home again. Hey, are you ready to save $600 a year, Mrs. Jones? Oh yeah, but call me next month. I'm, I'm out of state right now. And then, okay. Hey, Mrs. Jones, like uh, the telesales agents who, you know, exclusively try to do one call closes, they're just not nearly as successful as, as agents who have a system in place. They're following up. There's kind of slowly putting that closer to the, to the pole or to the goal line um, versus face-to-face agents who a lot of times are successful if they do a one, Hey, I'm here today, Mrs. Jones. I don't know when I'll be back. And I mean, you know, you've heard it. You've, you've, I've heard it, whatever it is that you've said, or agents have said, I've heard it, you know, Oh, I'm only in this area today, Mrs. Jones. I'm not going to be back out for three months in this area. I'm going to be out in your area. I'm going to be out in your area. Or Mrs. Jones, if you don't get this coverage today, you know, what, what happens if you pass away tomorrow, right? If, If you're selling final expense, I mean, all of it. So I, I think, um, I think being, being better at managing a follow-up, it's going to make it easier for the client to close. It, it's just easier for everybody. If, if you're following up, just do your job, follow up. Yeah. 
Now, like what, what, what's that, what's that, uh, that statistic that says like such a, it's like a very large amount of sales are made on like the fifth to eighth contact or something like that. It's more than half, more than half of sales come on like the fifth plus contact. And if you, again, if you go into it with that mindset where you're like, I'm going to have to touch this lead five to 10 times to get it to where I want it. Um, those are the agents and agency owners who are really successful. Yeah. That's so yeah. kind of to tie back to the technology. So you just put out a video about CRMs. How many different CRMs have you personally looked? I mean, I personally looked at a ton, but I'd be curious to know, you know, we're talking about follow-up. We're talking about tracking leads, tracking prospects. What CRM system are you using now? What have you used? What would you recommend? I, I would love to hear. So, Um, I've looked at a bunch over the years, but I've only personally used three. Uh, the first one I used was like this ancient freaking technology. And the only reason I ever used it was because it was what my dad used when I started. Like, that's what we had, you know, um, it was this really old software called Inscom. Um, they're probably going to go to business at some point because yeah, they're not, not in the even, cloud. I don't even know who that is. They're not in the cloud, right? It's all it, like all the data had to be backed up, like on a drive or something like that. Like it was old, 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 like nineties technology old. That's what my dad would use, was using when I got here. Um, then I used radius, um, because my friend in the office found radius and he tried him first and seemed like it was working well for him. So I got, I started getting involved with radius Um, And I used Radius for years, probably three years or so, something like that. About two months ago, we made the transition to move from Radius over to Agency Block. So that's what we're using right now, Agency Block. Um, And I really like Agency Block. Like, I mean, any of you guys that want to know my thoughts on either one of those, I, like Glenn said, I made a whole video about both of them. Um, But yeah, those are, those are the three I've used personally. I've looked into countless, right? Just like, just just out of curiosity. Um, but I feel like you don't really know a CRM, even if you get a demo, I probably, you don't really completely know a CRM unless you've actually used it for a little bit of time, um, to get some opportunity to kind of play with it and kind of get, you know, more familiarized with the inner workings of the system. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are the two, the, the, the three CRMs, but the two that anybody would know that I've used extensively and I know very well. So right now we're using agency block. Did you move to agency block because you're wanting to manage agents out of the CRM? Is that, is that kind of what forced that transition? Yeah. Um, and it was also, you know, we're, we're, we're contracting so many more agents now. I did not have a good way of keeping track of all their information, like national producer numbers, licenses, PDFs, ENO, what states they're licensed in, what agent numbers, all this stuff. Before that, we were using an Excel spreadsheet, which was not good. Um, I mean, it worked for a little while, but like we have 50 con 50 plus contracted agents now. Um, it's just not possible anymore. Yeah. And so the, what I like, and radius didn't have the capability of keeping track of agent information. It's really built for clients and leads. Those two things. It has a system that's built by the same developers called megaphone that is specifically for keeping track of agent information. I did a seven day free trial. I spent a couple of days messing with it. I hated it. Like I detested it. Um, it just wasn't what I needed. So agency block gives me, gave me the client information and the agent information all in one place. And also, like you said, um, you know, as we start to build out our captive force, we need a CRM to where we can create their own accounts and all that stuff. And it's just, it just was made more sense for where we're going as a company. Yeah. And that's, again, this kind of goes back to the scripting and the tonality and you have to find that system that works best for you. There are so many CRMs out there. It's mind numbing. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we put together an article at lead heroes where we went through like at the time, 10 of some of the most popular CRMs that were being used. And this is like a two year, this was two years ago. And a lot of those CRMs Um, radius, like we just talked about, I mean, an agency block, a lot of these are still in the conversation, but there's some that aren't even a part of the conversation because there's new, you know, go high level is a CRM system that's being white labeled and people are skinning it and they're customizing it. So there's a ton of 
um, different go high level CRMs out there. There's more generic CRMs that aren't insurance specific, like Zoho, like Salesforce, which I'm still seeing people use. Um, the system that works best is the system that you're going to actually use that you're familiar with. Yeah. I am not aware of a telesales agent or a telesales agency that's not utilizing a CRM. Agreed. Um, there, yeah. and, and to take this a step further, there was a small agency that I was trying to work with <laughs> through Lead Heroes last year. And I actually got on a Zoom. It was right after the pandemic started. HubSpot. That's another great one, Rebecca. Thanks for sharing. Um, let us know, you guys. Uh, I'm curious. If you are using a CRM or if you're thinking about switching to a CRM, let us know in the comments. I'd love to know what CRM system you guys are using right now or, or what you're looking at. But um, just a quick kind of anecdotal story is right after the pandemic started, I was working with this small agency and they were trying to transition to telesales. And I'm on a Zoom call just like this with, with the agency and the one guy who was just so upset. I'm trying to get numbers out of them. I'm like, okay, how many leads have you talked to? You know, how many leads have you closed? And he just starts, he just starts like, you know, like going through pages. It's like, you know, on his desk. I'm like, what are you? I'm like, what do you do? He's like, I've got it written down somewhere. And I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I'm like, it's 2020. I'm like, what do you mean you've got it written down somewhere? <laughs> I'm like, that's not like, it's just, oh, just like my, I'm, I'm, at, at that point, I knew for a fact that this agency was never going to go anywhere with telesales because they weren't utilizing any type of CRM or dialer software to stay Or I'm just like, there's no way you guys you can't do it. Right. It's, insane absolutely insane yeah i i don't see how you can do any kind of i i think you're insane even if you're doing face to face if you're not using a crm and some kind of technology like i mean if you're out in the field let's say you still go to every single house right more power to you but if you're not using like <laughs> more power to you <laughs> like if you're not uh, the, the, that makes me think of a certain uh, Zoom call we had one evening, but um, same. But 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 like I feel like if you're not using a Sunfire, a Connecture, a CSG, a CRM, like these different tools we're talking about, I feel like you're making your life harder, right? Like I know, right? I started in the business with some ancient CRM, right? That I could never figure out. I still to this day, if I could not figure out that CRM, it was like. It was, it was um, probably as old as I am, that CRM. It was ridiculous. Um, if you can even call it a CRM, but it, it was just, but, but, you know, did everything on paper, didn't do e-apps, all those things. Like my, my life was a lot more difficult as an agent. Um, my, my life is so much easier now. Like if I had all the tools today that I had when I started, I'd probably have three times as many big of a book of business today. Because there's, it just eliminates inefficiencies and, and time-wasting activities. And it just makes you a lot more of a more productive agent. You can do things faster and better. Yep. I was right there with you. I did almost everything on paper when I first got started. And it was a nightmare. It was chaos. Um, and, and I guess the thing with face-to-face -face sales is you, kind, you can kind of BS your way through it without utilizing technology. I don't even feel like that's possible when you're doing telesales. Like you have to, you like, again, trying to go paper only with tell, like that's just the most, um, you know, <laughs> mail the app. Yeah. The it, app. it just doesn't make any, like, it makes me want to put my head through the wall. Just thinking about it. Like it's two completely different, like, okay, you want to use technology to sell insurance but you're not going to use some basic tools that are available to stay organized. Like it just, it does, it's not cohesive. It doesn't work. It's not going to go together. So one thing I thought that we should talk about um, as well, because I know we're getting, we're getting close to being out of time here, but I, I didn't want this to wrap up without having this conversation as well was um, is with, with an, what, what, what should an agent be doing in terms of, like what, what kind of leads are best for telesales or does it matter, right? Like, cause I've heard the stereotype for years that 
you can't sell direct mail leads over the phone. Well, I just, I completely took a, took a crap on that last pandemic because I was, I did, you know, the lead concepts, lead review video. I was making tons of orders and I was selling them from my kitchen table when our office was shut down. Right. Like, um, I don't, I, I personally don't believe that, but is there a certain type of lead that better helps people with telesales? Like that's another thing I get, I get asked all the time. I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I'm biased, right. With this (laughs) question, but um, here's the key part of telesales. If you're selling over the phone and you're selling using a phone number, a lead that has a validated phone number is probably going to be one of your best lead choices for telesales. So um, obviously live transfers or direct transfers, um, warm transfers, those can be really great for telesales because again, you've already got them on the phone. They're being handed off to you. Um, you know, personally, I think live transfers really work best for an agency environment where it's a call center environment where there's multiple people who can answer the phone when the phone rings. Um, I don't think an independent agent necessarily has as much success with live transfers. Many agents have proven me wrong on this. There's always exceptions to that rule. Um, but the bottom line is the tough part with direct mail. And, and I agree, direct mail can be sold over the phone. I know agencies who sell direct mail over the phone. Um, the toughest part with direct mail is that if you don't have their phone number, if you ask them to write in the phone number on, yeah. on the card and they, they, yeah, they mail it back without the phone number or they wrote their number down wrong or, you know, they said, you know, they wrote in, hey, just mail. <laughs> I've seen so many direct mail cards, right? Just mail it to me. Um, so that's that's the tough part is direct mail not having a valid phone number for that lead because you're, you're shit out of luck, essentially. Yeah, um, internet leads. Very true. Internet leads, essentially the same problem. Um, now there's systems where you can validate the number um, and make sure like it's not a disconnected number. You can make sure it's a real number. But a lot of times with these internet leads, especially the cheap internet leads out there, is that the number doesn't work. You know, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, they just typed in a number. So, you know, that's, I, it's almost less about the lead. And it's more about, you know, is this person's phone number accurate? So yes, okay, this person was interested in talking to you about insurance, great. Well, do you have an accurate phone number that will actually get you to that person? And then, you know, will they answer the phone? How many times do you have to call them to answer the phone? Yeah. And that's very true. I mean, I know when we get direct mail leads, especially like we don't go to the door on them anymore. Right. Just, I just don't have time to do it anymore. And I'm, I'm doing less and less selling myself, you know, like we have our first captive agent that's scheduled to start the first of March. We're really excited to have her here, um, and, you know, kind of get to work, but I'm, I'm doing less and less sales myself, but when I am selling and we get a direct mail batch back, like if I'm going through the leads, if I see someone that doesn't have a phone number, I just move on. You know, I'm like, okay. oh, that sucks. You know, I just keep going. Yeah. And then like, if they have an email address, I'll have, I'll put it like a stack of them together that have email addresses. And I'll have like, you know, one of our admin staff send out emails to them and stuff like that. Being like, Hey, you sent this card in, you, we don't have a phone number, blah, 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 you know? Um, and sometimes we'll get responses back on that. But I mean, if you can't reach them by email and there's no, I mean, unless you're planning to go to the door, you're screwed. Um, so someone asked a good question. Um, and this is another question that I get asked a lot too. I'm sure you do too, about if they don't have an email, like if you're trying to sell over the phone and they don't have an email address, um, Michael asked for a tell sales agent, if a client, if the client doesn't have an email, should I help them sign up with a Gmail? So my opinion versus rather than trying to do that, my opinion is have a have a carrier in your bag where you can do everything by voice because this kind of goes back to what we we're talking about earlier in the conversation you know having essentially lining up with what they want to do right so if they want to do business with you and they don't have an email but they're more than happy to keep talking to you on the phone grab that carrier that can do everything voice and then boom you can get it done just by three-waying the carrier in. I mean, a lot of times it's like a 15, 20 minute phone call with the carrier. 
it, it depends, right? Obviously, some carriers are going to want more, some carriers want less, but generally it doesn't take too long. Plus it, it builds a lot of validity for what you're doing and who you say you are. Hey, I work with Aetna. I'm going to get Aetna on the phone now or mutual, you know, whatever, whatever carrier that you're, you're three-waying in. So th- I think that can be really beneficial to, to building rapport and building trust. Plus you're getting everything done right there. So my, that's my personal answer to that question is I wouldn't try setting them up. I would just say, hey, we're, we're going to use this carrier. They have a voice signature process and we can do it all by phone. I, I agree with that. I second that. Um, I think that's spot on. Like when I was first getting started, um, we had probably a fraction of the med sub carriers we have today in our office. Um, we had United local Blue Cross company. We had Continental, but it wasn't really Aetna Senior yet. Um, We had Mutual of Omaha, a couple companies, but one company that I love to sell, and I sold a ton of them my first 12 to 18 months in the business was Equitable Life and Casualty. Because they back at that time, they were one of the only companies, and, and they definitely had the best process of the companies that did do it, that had a telephone interview process to where you'd get an underwriter on the phone like that, And they just walk through the interview process and they tell you right then and there if they were approved, declined for an underwritten med sup. Um, I loved doing that, Um, doing doing that process. It was just so easy. And nowadays, a lot of carriers do it, you know, like Aetna Senior does it. And there's a bunch of companies that do it. Um, So I I completely second that because it's probably, you know, just as easy, if not easier than doing it any other way, especially if it's an underwritten product. So one thing we haven't gotten into, I'm just... I want this to be as all encompassing as possible. So if someone is listening to this, they have an idea of what, what they can do. So one thing that I know comes up all the time, um, I see agents post about it seems like almost daily. Um, and it's, uh, Hey, what, what headset should I use? Or, (laughs) Oh, Hey guys, what, what's the best computer? I'm going to get into telesales. I need a computer should I get a PC or should I get a Mac or should I get an iPad? Um, and, and, you know, I kind of have this condescending tone because I think for <laughs> the most part, it's, it's really less about the hardware and it's just more about doing it. Like it's more about the, there's not a computer that you're going to buy that's going to make you massively successful, but I know you did just get a computer. I mean, do you have any specific thoughts on hardware for a telesales agent? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I second, I, I agree with what you said. I don't think it matters that much. Like, right. Obviously you don't want a piece of shit, you know, that doesn't work like that. That's not going to do you any good. Like if you have some, yeah. so, so it does need to work <laughs> yeah, it has to be able to turn on and like, yeah. you don't want it to be filled with spyware and all this stuff to where you can't get, it takes you an hour to load a page or something. Like, obviously you want something decent. Um, but I don't think it really matters if it's a Mac or if it's a PC or something like that. Like I, all my computer, like the computer I had before, this one was a Dell. This one, this one is a, a, a PC and um, the one that I'm on right now. And this, this was like a $2,000 computer, you know, um, there, I know people that spend $5,000 in their computer, $10,000 in their computer or something like that. I don't. I just don't feel like I need right. to my Dell that I bought before this one was about two years old and um, we're still going to use it in our office just in a different capacity because um, it still works fine. Um, but I, it's, it was like a thousand dollars, you know, I mean, for, for me, this is another thing that's important to keep in mind too, guys, especially, you know, this is maybe a little bit off topic, but the, you know, one thing we always make sure all of our computers do have is, um, especially if it's a PC or Windows based software, I think it's a different program completely for Macs, but um, is that your your computers are encrypted. Um, we make sure that all of our computers have BitLocker, which is the Windows encryption software um, set up on ours, essentially because it's a for, for Medicare for most Medicare Advantage companies anyway, most people I don't hear this talked about very often, but for most Medicare Advantage companies, it's a requirement. Um, like it's in a lot of these certifications nowadays. And um, so we have all of our computers encrypted like that. Um, and when we, when, anytime I get a new computer, like with, if it's a Windows, you have to get Microsoft Professional, 
like, you know, Microsoft Home's not going to do it. And for me, I just hate the process of setting it up. Like, I think it's pretty clear. I'm not a very naturally tech savvy person. <laughs> so you're I becoming a senior. <laughs> Get him a med sub. Somebody hurry. <laughs> I will pay whoever's building our computer extra to set it up for me, like install it, set it up, get it all. I don't want to deal with it. I just want to know what the password is, you know? Um, But that's something that, you know, we've always been very, well, not always last couple of years, we've been very, um, very attentive to making sure all of our computers have. So yeah, I do agree. That that's something that's not talked about a lot. And I actually, once upon a time, I used to work in the IT managed services space. And I will say that the, the sort of HIPAA compliance violations that are happening would blow everyone's mind. <laughs> I, went to a, I went to a dental office where um, they were using a shared Gmail account between all of the employees. <laughs> And it, it wasn't even a G Suite account. It was like literally dental office at gmail.com. And they were sending x-rays and like, you know, again, we're talking private health information and everyone can access it. And there's, there was no accountability for who was accessing it when. Um, and I just remember being like, wow, so people really don't care or don't understand. So HIPAA compliance is something to take very seriously. And that's something that, um, again, as you're researching some of these tools, um, you can get CRMs that are specifically HIPAA compliant. Um, There's like eFax, for example, if you are trying to do something like a a remote fax, there's certain eFax providers that are HIPAA compliant, there's others that are not. So I definitely think that's worth mentioning, you know, regardless of what direction you go with a lot of these tools or technology, making sure you're HIPAA compliant could potentially save you a lot of heartache down the road. um, If you end up getting it. Yeah, for sure. Like another thing with that is like, so our email service we use, a lot of people use G suite and it's, it's fantastic. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, we'd probably use it if I didn't have the one we have now. And I just dread changing our emails after all this time, but we use like a local technology company in Salt Lake called X mission and they're a fully encrypted email. Like I pay hundred bucks a year or something like that for all of our email addresses. Um, and it's incredibly secure. It's a very good, it's a very good company. Although I'd much rather use G Suite at this point. I just don't want to, I, you know how it is changing emails. It's a nightmare. Oh, yeah. um, and because everybody has your old email address, right? But, um, but like the other thing too, is, you know, it's not a bad idea to have like a Proton or some kind of secure or Zix, you know, secure email software as well. So that way, if you need to transport, you know, private information from one place to another, you can send it in a way that it's going to be protected. Yeah, there's, there's, again, it's one of those things where there's a ton of ways of doing it. There's not necessarily one or right or wrong way, but it's just being HIPAA compliant. You know, that's, that's important. So, you know, so we talked about, we talked about hardware, we talked about software, you know, software, we talked about quoting, we talked about CRMs, you know, we didn't really talk about dialers as much. Um, Again, if you're, if you're an independent agent calling on leads, maybe you don't necessarily need a dialer as much as somebody who is maybe doing cold calling or they're calling old leads. The other thing too, is a lot of these CRM systems like radius that we talked about, they have dialing systems built in, right? You can actually dial straight out of the CRM. So CRMs and dialers are are almost interchangeable in in a lot of conversations. So, um, you know, quote, e-app, CRM for follow-up, you know, we talked hardware, PC is probably better. It seems like most of these carriers are designing their e-apps or designing their software to run on um, Windows. So that's something to keep in mind. At one point, using a Mac was almost impossible. I don't know if that's still the truth today. Um, And you can also get Windows on a Mac. So that's another potential solution. Um, I'm just trying to think, is there anything else you think that we missed with, with telesales? Yeah. I mean, dialers, I think 
like you said, you know, the radius dialer, um, a lot of good, a lot of CRMs these days are going to include your dialers and that kind of thing. And, and I agree with you. I think unless you're cold calling, it's not that big of a deal anyway. Um, I think if you're just calling leads, I mean, probably not necessary. Um, I would say, what about recording conversations? Are you recording all your conversations? I love, yeah, that's a, that's a great conversation to have. Um, so right now we aren't, and, um, it's starting to bite me in the ass. And so, um, we're actually, so we, we have the capability of recording our conversations. So we're actually in the process of changing up our system. So we usually bring central for our phones. Um, and we like it, you know, it works really well. Um, it, you know, we were using kind of like an old school landline before that kind of phones to where like, you know, we could still transfer calls and everything like that, but it was just a little older. And, um, we changed to ring central, you know, internet based phone. And, um, it was, we haven't been recording our calls, but I found myself in a position situation where like we've had, it hasn't happened a lot, but like during AEP specifically this past AEP, I don't know how many conversations I had over the phone with clients and prospect. It was insane. Like it was freaking ridiculous. I might've had a thousand, 2000 phone conversations. I'm sure I don't you know. Did. I'm sure you um, have thousands. So, you know, what we do now is anytime we have a phone call with someone, we make, you know, just a short little note in the CRM about what the conversation was and what happened in the date and who they talked to and all that stuff. But we don't record the calls. We just have never felt like we needed to. Well, um, I had a couple of people that came back after AEP when I sold them something and they're like, you told me that it worked this way. And I know for a fact, I wouldn't have told them that I'm like, nothing would have nothing in God's green earth would have possessed me to say that. You know what I mean? Like no freaking way. You know, it's just like ridiculous things. Like, like, um, you told me if I signed up for this $0 premium plan, I wouldn't have to pay for my part B or something like that. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I don't think I said that. I think you're confusing me with someone else. Um, but, Christian, you said you're going to send me a hundred dollar gift card every yeah. month once yeah. I signed up for this. Where's my gift plan. card? Yeah, where's my free gift card? What's what's going on here? What the hell, you scam yeah. artist? <laughs> but I'm but DMS. so we're actually looking. We're actually playing with the notion of starting to record all of our calls now and and um, essentially keeping them on files in the CRM, um, just because I don't want to deal with that. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I think that's starting to happen more and more because we're becoming a bigger company. I think, I, and I'm sure you deal with this too. You know, like people say, you say, you know, somebody said one thing, maybe they talked to an assistant of yours or something. Never, ne- never, are, ever. Agents are amazing, dude. Agents would never do that. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying, Christian? Never. What are you talking about? But I think, I think every business gets to the point where as they get to a certain size and a scale, that that happens. I think it just happens. So I feel like we're at the point where we're kind of needing to start doing that. So that's kind of where we're at there. Yeah, I would recommend it for sure. So last year, we actually switched our internal software around to where we're at Lead Heroes. We record every phone call. Um, and there's there's a few reasons for it. Like one is is for coaching and training. You know, if, if my assistant's talking to someone and they say something that they shouldn't have, I want to be able to listen to that phone call and say, hey, you shouldn't have said this, you know, now I have to call this person back and, and tell them, well, this was the right way to do it. So that's one reason to do it. And then obviously another one is CYA covering your apps. Like you said, yeah. I think really the minimum you should be doing is what Christian said, like at a bare minimum, you should be writing down when you spoke to this person, what you spoke to them about, you know, they called you, you called them like that should all be written down at a bare minimum. But I think it's even better if you can have kind of a, an automatic way of just saving those phone calls. So um, Tabitha asked what I use for recording phone calls. So it's, it's essentially part of, it was a, is an additional software that we got um, that connected to our CRM platform. So I don't even know if really what I'm using would really work for anyone else, but what, what have you looked at for recording phone calls, Christian? Well, um, we've been, we've been looking into re- like the last, actually literally last couple of weeks. Um, it was actually one of the projects that my assistant was supposed to work on today, <laughs> but she's sick. Um, but ring central was what we were going to actually start doing with it. Cause it has the capability. 
of recording our phone calls because it's completely, it, it's a very um, good technology. Um, so it has the capability and it has an, a way that we can essentially, you know, integrate it in very um, seamlessly with the CRM yeah. and kind of have it saved. So we were, we're at, if we do do, we're, we're probably going to do it. I'm positive we're going to do it, but um, it's going to be with Ring Central. A lot of, I know a lot of agencies and agents who use Ring Central, and that's, that's probably a big reason why is because those phone calls can automatically be recorded and saved. And, you know, again, if something comes up down the road like this and a senior is trying to say that you said something that obviously you would never say, having that phone call could be priceless. It really can. Yeah. I mean, luckily it hasn't caused any too big of problems. It's just, you know, oh, well, you know, that this is how it really, this is how it really works. I, I don't think you said that, heard that from us. Um, and then, you know, it's just, you, it, it's been fortunate enough to where it hasn't caused any big issues, but I could see it at one point someday being a big issue. Right. Um, cause like the other thing is a lot of your clients guys that you need to keep in mind is if they're, if they have a conversation with you and they buy something from you, they might've talked to like five other people before you, you know, yeah. and they're not going to say so. Not going to admit it to you, but there's, I mean, there was a situation a couple of years ago, probably like it must have been four years now. Um, I had a client, I had her on the books for a long time, you know, med sub client, she's very, very nice lady. And her brother just moved back from China, just got on Medicare, needed help. So she invited me over to her house. This was when I was still doing house calls. So I went to the house and um, she saw me there and she was like, she's like, didn't you have a ponytail before? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And then I, I didn't say anything. And then when she walked away, you know, I was sitting at the table with her brother and he's like, so what happened to that ponytail? I was like, well, I think she's remembering somebody else. It, I, I've never had a ponytail. I'm like wrong guy. Cause I was starting to lose my hair at this point. Right. And, um, and she, and, and then he was like, he was like, oh, he's like, I, I will keep it on the hush hush. She's just not remembering. I'll keep it on the hush hush. But like, she thought she was confused. And then but I'm sure what happened was the agent that came to her house before me came in, probably had a ponytail. I came in and snatched it from him because that's what I do. But um, <laughs> <laughs> be careful if you're selling insurance in Utah, Christian will snatch <laughs> your deal right out from under your ponytail, you guys. Right out from under the ponytail. <laughs> yeah. Misremembering or, yeah, you know, I talked to so-and-so and, you know, they, they just forget. Um, and, anything and then, we haven't covered you know i so i think you know once you build out your system like we've talked about you know and and there's so many different parts to the system and it, the system can be as complex or as simple as you want i mean if i were to start selling insurance tomorrow guys i'd probably just use my iphone to dial and i'd use my airpods for my headset you know, like it, I don't need to go out and buy or, or get something brand new. Like it can be really that simple. So um, I think building out a system that makes sense for you. And then once you have success, it's all about rinsing and repeating. Um, I, I think like we've talked about before, I think what separates the losers from the winners here is activity levels. So you know, however you're doing your leads, however you're doing your marketing, however you're prospecting, you got to keep your, your activity levels really high. And, and essentially, you've got to feed your system and you've got to just work that system week after week after week. And there will be great weeks. and There will be bad weeks. There'll be weeks where you sell nothing. There'll be weeks where it's like every call you're on is a sale. So I think I think having a system in place, being organized, you know, again, going from Hi, Mrs. Jones. Here's the quote, Mrs. Jones. Let's see if we can get you approved, Mrs. Jones. Okay, we're going to sign this. How are we signing the application? Um, you know, and then hopefully you get to a point too where you, with your system, you're following up and, and you are getting to that cross sale, which I'd love to talk an entire episode about cross sell and how, how to cross sell, when to cross sell, what products should you be cross selling as a senior insurance agent? Um, I think there's a ton of value in, in having that conversation and, and essentially just rinsing and repeating over and over and over. So I can't, you know, off the top of my head, I feel like that, that was a pretty thorough. I got one last thing. I got yeah. one last topic that just came yeah. to mind. 
So I, I have a new, I, I was talking with one of our newer agents the other day. Um, she's, she's pretty new. And she was like, you know, she got, she got a, um, her first lead order that came in and she did some lead concepts leads. That's what she wanted to do. And um, she, and I was very nice. I paid for half of it. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, anyway, so, but I, I, I think, I think a lot of her, I think she's going to do really well. That's why I did it. But, um, but anyway, she calls me up and she's like, I'm just having trouble just knowing exactly what to say when I get on the phone with people. She's trying to do a lot of things over the phone from my understanding. And um, one thing I told her, and I, I thought it would be relevant here to talk about just briefly, because I know we're probably running over on time. Your wife's probably going to burst in and drag you out, but um, I think we're good right now, but okay. Okay. Yeah, um, that is but, always a concern. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the biggest threat of taco Tuesday. Biggest taco Tuesday, right? My wife's just coming in just blowing me away. Um, but anyway, I told, what I told her is I was like the I think one of the most important things you need to focus on is you need to ask a lot of probing questions, not uncompliant questions, but probing questions, especially with leads. You have to first find out, you know, if they're, if you're selling Medicare, for example, you have to find out if they're on Medicare first and foremost, like that's another thing, guys, when you get on the phone, you can definitely have a good conversation with somebody and not get anywhere, right? Like you can just talk about nothing, right? And go nowhere. And a lot of agents do this. Um, I, I tell her, I, I basically took, you know, when I talked to her, I told her, I was like, I think the best thing you can be doing is ask a lot of questions and identify what they have. The quicker you can find out if they one qualify for what you have. And two, if you can even beat what they have, the better, because if you can't, you want to get off the phone, right? You don't want to waste your time. Um, and so that's one thing I told her, I was like, ask, you know, figure out if they're on Medicare, figure out what plan they have, figure out what insurance company it's with figure, you know, ask, ask, just ask questions, ask questions, ask questions and do it in such a way that you're not feel, being like you're too invasive. Um, but gathering information and making sure that it's a productive phone call is huge as well. So I was actually thinking about this. I went and saw, I got referred to a specialist, um, a doctor and, you know, there's the, the entry visit, right? Where essentially you're, you're just, you're, you're explaining what the situation is. You're talking to the doctor. They're not actually doing any procedures yet. Um, but it was so clean. Like I kept thinking about it. It was so direct because again, the doctor's time is so limited, right? This is a specialist. He's not just a, a doctor, but he's a doctor who went on to become a specialist. He's actually was look for, looking out for my, my shoulder because my shoulder's been bothering me. But um, I, from the time I was talking to the doctor until he handed me like back to the scheduler so I could schedule my next visit, I mean, it was probably less than 10 minutes. I mean, it was really, and, and you know, sometimes you might look at this and think, oh man, like, that was bad bedside manner or, you know, he didn't really take care of me because he bounced me so fast, but put yourself in his shoes. He's probably not really making any money on an entry level visit where you're just coming in and saying, hello, you know, Hey, this is my problem. He's getting paid when he's cutting you open and, and he's actually doing something. Yeah. And so um, I totally respected his time and how quickly he essentially bounced me and went from, Hey, yeah, this looks great. Okay. We'll take a look at this. Okay. Yep. Here's Jackie. She's going to schedule you for next month. And um, essentially, yeah, an insurance agent should be doing the same thing. You should be trying yeah. to get to that point as quickly as possible because as a new agent, I was one of those new agents, just like you mentioned, I was the agent that would sit there for two hours, have a lovely conversation, make best friends with, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and then get to the end of the, the conversation and be like, all right, are we ready to sign? And it's like, nope, we're not ready to <laughs> yeah, sign. It's like, yeah. give me a hug. I don't care. Yay! Like, yeah. Mwah. <laughs> it's like Mwah. rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> Nobody cares about getting paid. Yay! If, if oh my gosh, well, 
I think the, the, I think what this, if we can walk away from this episode with anything, it's that all Glenn cares about is the dollar dollar bills, y'all. Doesn't care about the connection. So I guess what I'm it's I'm obsessed with the efficiency, right? So I think right. you can you can have that connection, you can have a conversation, you can you can build a rapport, you can make a friend, build a friendship, you know, however you want to look at it, but to waste to not value your own time and to 100%. be willing. Yeah. yeah, you're you're essentially not valuing valuing your own time. You're essentially just gonna say, okay, I'll just waste two three hours here talking with someone who has no chance of actually being a client of mine. But who cares? Let's just talk. You're you're doing yourself a disservice, and there's other people you could be helping that you're not helping. So, right, you have you have to figure that out. You have to you have to be able to get there quickly, but not be rude. You have to ask the right questions. Just like you said, I think that's, I think that's a very, very valid point for sure. For, for any, for anybody that's not watching on video and you're listening to the audio, I was being facetious about <laughs> what uh, no, he wasn't. Um, I was, I was being totally facetious because I was that agent too, you know, that I would, I remember going on an appointment and I'd spend like an hour and a half on this appointment. And I knew in the first 15, 20 minutes that I couldn't right. do anything. And I walk out of it, be like, the <laughs> fuck did I just do? Why was I there so long? Like, what the hell? You know, like, so hundred percent guys, you have to spend your time with the right people. You have to almost look at yourself like a doctor, right? Like you only have so much time and you have to spend it wisely. Yeah. I, I specifically remember a, like a close to three hour appointment with the sweetest old couple beautiful rural setting they had a couple acres um and it just went nowhere and i kind of knew it was going to go nowhere but you know you you just kind of hang in for the ride and and you just keep talking and talking and talking and i was late i remember getting home late for dinner that night and and just feeling so stupid because i'm like i burned all this time and I really have nothing to show for it except, you know, I can call Mrs. Jones and we can chat, I guess, anytime I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I made a friend. Yeah. Hey, hey honey, how was work today? I made a friend. And, and um, the water awesome. bills, the, the, the light bills do. <laughs> yeah. well, okay. I made a friend. It doesn't. You can't put a price on my friendship with Mrs. Jones. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry, honey. <laughs> yeah, um, the sink is leaking. When are we going to yeah. fix that? Uh, well, don't worry. One of these friends oh, will yeah. convert into a client yeah. one of these days. They'll move from the friend zone to the client zone. <laughs> friend zone. <laughs> we'll just nurture this friendship. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, this is like therapy for me. Taco <laughs> Tuesday therapy. Taco Tuesday therapy. Working, working through it. Wow, 90 minutes, you guys. I feel like that was pretty good. I, if yeah. you guys have questions about telesales, or if there's something we didn't talk about with pertaining to telesales, you guys want more information about, please feel free to comment below this video. If you're listening on a podcast, you can find this video in the Six Figure Medicare Agent Facebook group, and you can comment. And Chris and I are more than happy to do our due diligence and try to answer your questions as best as we can. Yes. Obviously, I'm sure there's things that we didn't get to. Is this was kind of a crash course in in telesales? If you're new to telesales, if you really don't know where to start in telesales, um, and I'm sure there's there's more that we could have talked about. But um, I I felt like that was a pretty good all-encompassing conversation overall i really do yeah i agree i agree i think that i mean i mean if 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 i could if if me as a young agent could have just sat in and listened to this conversation it would have put me years ahead um so i i think there was a lot of good stuff that was covered here i think kind of let it all hang out you're welcome you guys i, I don't <laughs> know what else to say uh, <laughs> You're welcome. I don't know. <laughs> so um, final <laughs> thoughts, Glenn. Final sh thoughts, Mr. Final Shelton. thoughts. Um, you know, I, again, when it comes to efficiency, so but even before the pandemic, pandemic obviously created a, a, a situation where telesales just made a lot of sense. 
Um, but even before the pandemic, I was a huge believer and, you know, I guess a proponent of telesales, right? I was, there was no doubt in my mind, telesales was more efficient. Um, so, you know, if, if you're worried about telesales, if you're not sure if you can do it, you know, try to try to stick with the system. System-based selling is, is really what's going to keep you selling every single week. It's, it's not your skill. It's not the leads. It's not the script. It's not the area you're targeting. It's not the carrier you're representing. It's having a system in place where you can just plug into it and, and sell. Um, that's, that's really how you, you're going to be successful in the telesales space. Being able to take marketing dollars, plug it into a system that turns prospects or leads into clients, into commission, you know, you can pay yourself and then you're taking money, putting it back in and just over and over like a money machine. I mean, that's, I really think that's the way to do it. So that's my yeah. final thoughts. I'm a huge fan of telesales. Please do yourself a favor. Give it a, give it a true shot if you have it. I like that. Um, my final thoughts are, I would say, guys, I've been on both ed, um, ends of the fence, right? I've done everything face-to-face, -face, driving to every appointment. Um, absolutely don't miss it, right? Like, seems like every single time I'd have a day full of appointments, I get caught in like rush hour or an accident or something. Like, I'm running late to appointments. Like, it's just stressful. You know what I mean? And um, I don't miss because basically every single meeting and appointment I do these days are either someone's coming into the office that's within a 30 mile radius of us. Um, or we're doing, I mean, I do, you know, we're doing a virtual meeting like a zoom, or we're just completely just talking over the phone. Um, that's it, you know, and I don't leave my office, right. I'm like a hermit. I go home, I come back, you know, every single day. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love it. I get so much more done. First of all, first of all, um, and I'm way more efficient. My business grew more last year than any year I've ever been in the business because of, I think the pandemic just kind of, you know, pushing the industry into this virtual and telesales world. And I, I just basically, you know, embrace the, brace the hell out of it. You know, I was like, come here, you know, new virtual way of doing things. I was like, I'm ready. Um, I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. But um guys, I I mean I've been on both sides of it and um and I I understand the intimidation factor of it, right? When you're used to doing it one way for so long, but if you can just kind of keep an open mind to it and like Glenn said give it a shot, you might be amazed at what can happen with your business. So, that's my final thoughts. Totally agree. All right, guys. Well, I think we gave you enough Taco Tuesday for one week. So we will be back next week. Um, thank you for tuning in and adios, everybody. Till next week. <laughs>